Welcome to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls. Um, I'm Alex. And I'm Sarah. And this is a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast where we are obsessed with her books and can't stop thinking about it or talking about it. So we figured, why not record us thinking and talking about it? So we're going to break down chapters, go through each book separately, go into character analysis and any thoughts or kind of theories that we have about books, characters, plots, etc. And maybe play some fun games along the way. Exactly. So welcome and enjoy. We're on. We're recording. We're on. Welcome back to Finale Week. Finale Week. Finale Week. This is the mini-sode. Mm-hmm. So spoilers? Probably not many. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're going to talk mostly, let's talk mostly on this book. Like, yeah. why this book? So mm-hmm. if you've read the first book, which I'm assuming you did if you finished the first ten episodes, mm-hmm. I think you're good. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we just kind of wanted to chit chat about this book, thoughts, feelings, yeah, why we chose this book, why why it like touched our souls so badly that All we like feels. can't stop thinking and talking about it. Yeah, I don't know. We're kind of winging it. It's finale week. I know. We're just so happy and grateful and loving this book. I know. I like. I can never read this book enough times. I know. I do think like. Obviously, next time I read it, I won't be hyper analyzing everything. Right. And so it'll be a more enjoyable read. But I love that we did go through and hyper analyze it because I feel like we got more out of it. We really did. There's so many things reading it four times that I've never <laughs> picked up on until this past time. Yeah. Like that's, that's crazy. You can read something so many times. And this isn't, I feel like this isn't one of those deep books that you know, you're taught in school about to yeah, dig it's not deep. literature. No, it's not literature. There's not all these <laughs> metaphors and da-da-da, all this stuff. This was just, like, something – it's a yeah. fantasy series that you're like, oh, this is going to be so entertaining. Yeah. And there's so much to it. There's so much. And I, I love it when you can go to a book and it shows you something different every time. Yeah. Because of, based off of where you're at. Mm-hmm. And you get to notice different things. Yeah. It can affect you differently. I think it's just incredible when people write books like that. Mm-hmm. Just praise to SJM. Praise. Um, I prepared a little bit for today, so oh, I took a few do. random notes. So just to like help give us random things to think about and yeah. talk through. I loved how this pulled from a fairy tale. I thought that was so cool that it was kind of like loosely based on Beauty and the Beast and mm-hmm. then went off on its own journey from there. Right. But I thought it was it was interesting how it's like we were almost like lured in with this like really like safe story that we right. thought we had figured out and mm-hmm. then it just kind of like went on its own thing it really does it totally turns on its head and it's yeah. nothing like beauty and the beast no but i love beauty and the beast and that's why at first i was like oh this is a beauty and the beast retelling mm-hmm. i have to yep read this mm-hmm. joke <laughs> i just thought that that was funny um what did you think about the characters in this book mm. so this book compared to other books, I definitely don't think you get as much depth of character. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, in, in the second book, when we dive into Reese and Farrah's relationship more, we learn a lot about them individually as people. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tamlin, I think we do learn a little bit about him in this book. But again, the second book, we really get to know Tamlin. Yeah. Um, so I think this is much more of a surface level character building. Um and just kind of overall, like, how they see the world kind of thing. Yeah. And just a get-to-know-them mm-hmm. phase, whereas the other books really are the... They go real deep into their personalities real deep and who in they personalities, are. Personalities, relationships, all that. Totally. So, I do think, while you're totally right, and we don't learn a whole lot about the mm-hmm. backgrounds of a lot of these characters... I do think that Sarah J. Mass did a really great job of still showing how complex oh, for sure. everybody was. Mm-hmm. Like, no one was straightforward. Everyone's actions were, like, very unique. And, right. like, I just, I really appreciated that, again, with what little information was given on every character, mm-hmm. we were shown how complex they were and then how individually unique they all were. Right. Like, no two characters were remotely alike. No. Which 
was really cool, I think. Mm -hmm. And we still get such a deep, interactive, interesting story. Yes. It's not like a surface level story. Like, there's still so much going on. Mm Mm-hmm. And, I mean, fair, you learn so much about her and you see her break down to her lowest point. So you do see a good depth of character. I just know we get more so in the second book. Totally. So, But I love that this book is still so interesting and so deep and so good that I do want to read the second book, even with a happy ending to the first book kind of thing. I totally agree. Um, I also really appreciated just like staying on characters. I think the person we learned the most about obviously was Farah, mm-hmm. and her like journey of growth I think is so beautiful. Oh, for sure, it's it's amazing how how terribly she starts out, how she kind of rises from it, crashes and burns again, mm-hmm. and then really just digs herself out of the trenches and yeah. saves everyone. <laughs> it felt very real for a fantasy book. It really you know? did. Because that's something that we go through. You know, mm-hmm. highs and lows. It's not just, oh, she started low and then is high for the rest of the book. Totally. Yeah. I just... I, yeah, I very much enjoy that, respect that. I know. can appreciate that. I just, I love it. I sometimes, in some ways, I really relate to Feyre and in other ways I don't. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think whether or not you relate to her, you can... I think we can all relate to like that journey yeah. in a way. Mm-hmm. And so I think wherever we're at in that journey, it's, I don't know, it's, it's good to, in a weird way, like use this as a roadmap of like, oh no, you can dig yourself out of it too. Like yeah. I get very emotionally attached to my books and make them part of my personality. Right. So like I'm a little extra when it comes to this, like mm-hmm. I will pretend that I am a Valkyrie while I'm working out to try and motivate myself. Like that's who I am. Right. That's fine. But I, I love getting to know characters who go through things like this that are so human and Mm -hmm. are so real and being able to as silly as it may sound be like Feyre did it Mm -hmm. (laughs) like yeah Feyre pulled herself out of that trench and she had it a lot worse than you Mm -hmm. so I don't know that sounds silly but no but it's also like it's nice to know that there are people in your life that you might not expect things out of that come to surprise you Mm -hmm. similarly to you know Resand who yes like saves her in the end or attempts to save her totally um, so just characters that you people in your life that you don't expect to do things it's always nice to see those yeah. kind of surprises and how you can't judge people like on surface level stuff and yeah everybody's got their own story and everybody's unique and so it's very relatable totally. the whole book is so what other things do you think that this book helped you like learn um i do think especially when you know our guest star Andy was in here and was kind of talking to us just really the different ways people kind of feel emotion express Mm. emotion um I don't really think I ever thought about it necessarily in that way um because we were I mean we were digging into Elaine and Nesta pretty harshly because you and I are both very much in how (laughs) Pharaoh would react to certain situations we're doers and not everyone is like that. Yeah. And it's very hard for me to understand why people aren't like that. Um, so getting Andy's perspective kind of helped me appreciate how yeah. Elaine and Nesta acted and not necessarily judge them so harshly on that. No, so I totally agree. And that's me in real life, too. Like, I see people and I'm like, <laughs> why aren't you doing anything? I don't get it. Why are you just moping? Yeah. But that's just how people respond and that's how... I should be sympathetic to that or empathetic yeah. and just understand that not everyone is like me. Not everyone reacts it's like the, the same way. Thing. It's very hard. Why isn't everyone like me? But I think I love, I love that that's what books like can show us. Right. Like I, I love that just by like the act of reading, mm-hmm. we can learn empathy. Yeah. Like, or like, but you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's not even about reading like fancy literature books either. Right. Like, Um, I have, like, sometime, I went through a phase where I felt like I had to read to learn. Mm -hmm. Like, I I had to, like, very specifically be trying to learn something. Right. So I read a lot of, like, nonfiction books, and I just was, like, in in that for so long. And those are great books. Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But I just realized that, like, I had put myself in such a pigeonhole of thinking, like, those are the only books books where you can learn and it's like no Mm -hmm. like I like went back and was thinking to like my childhood of reading Harry Potter and and so many books I basically grew up in a borders I've read so 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 many books in my lifetime from fantasy to like do you remember those like princess diaries books oh yeah historical prince yeah and so it's like 
are any of those things like real life, super practical? No. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I can learn even still by seeing from a different perspective. Right. Or um, like seeing how a type of circumstance can play out and maybe that equips me to handle something later. Like it's like reading is so amazing and such a gift. So when people say they don't read, I'm like, you're a robot. Like I I, I don't understand how people can do that. But I think going back to what I went on a small tangent because I love this idea of the way, the things that books could teach us. So Mm -hmm. I just, I, I think she did a really amazing job at exactly what you're describing of like showing all the different perspectives by having such different characters go Mm -hmm. through hard things. And it's just, I don't know. It's just really beautiful to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this book so much. Um, let's see. What do you think, like, the overall, like, theme of this book was? Hmm. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm interviewing you. Oh, please. That's <laughs> what I'm here for. I've got a mic and all. This is true. Um, overall theme, I think, for this book, I think, is personal growth. Yeah. Um, just with Farrah being such the predominant character in this book um, and really just seeing her whole journey Mm -hmm. um, and all the struggles she deals with and the interactions she has with people and just seeing how her perspective on everything has changed. Yeah. Um, I just think it's a growth story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. My focus was a little bit more and I think this is top of mind because of the quote at the end that made me think about Dumbledore and not to get Harry Potter on it. But like love was the theme for me in this. Like I think... Like, I think love comes in so many different forms and fashions. Mm-hmm. So it's like, Feyre's, like, love for her family drew her in, like, so many different ways at the beginning. And then, you know, it, it carried through in her trying to protect her family for a while mm-hmm. when she went to the Fairylands. And then she had her love for Tamlin and this, like, love friendship with Lucian. And then, you know, a love for herself starting to grow. Mm-hmm. And then a love for Prithian, a love for her sister, like... I feel like in so many ways, like, love was the thread yeah. that held everything together. Like, even, like, in those moments, resand. Mm-hmm. Like, there was this, like, again, I say the word love, but love comes in many forms, right. right? So it's, like, there's almost this, like, we talked about how there was this, like, weird, like, friendship partnership that formed and how at the end when both were, like, on the brink of death from Amarantha, they were trying to help each other. Like, right. And it's so it's like it's funny and cheesy that the answer to that riddle was love. Right. But I just I feel like that was how it is like in life too, like the thing that kind of can thread it all together. So mm-hmm. I just I don't know. That's sweet. I do like it that. No, sweet. but it's so true. It really is. When you break down everything like that, it, yeah. it is the theme. Well, you are also right. Right, no, I know I, we're both, there's no wrong answer to yeah. it. It's just you know, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um do I have any other thoughts that I wanted to bring up? Oh, one other thing that I was just thinking about is I'm always so impressed when people can world build like this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, it's a world that, like, not only can I escape to, but it, like, makes sense to escape to. You know what I it mean? It does. Because mm-hmm. it's like, sometimes you read fantasy books and you're like, I don't really know what world I'm in, so I'm just going <laughs> to focus on, like, how these characters are interacting yeah. and, like, whatever. But, like, she did such a good job building this world. Yeah. And she, you get more so involved in yeah. the whole world, like, as the books go on. It just sucks you right in, though. I you know. can picture everything. You really can. I'm Yeah, I'm so excited for the TV show. I just want to see this. <laughs> like, I want to see my world visualized. Yes! But it's it's always like impressive to me. Just even people that can like create names. Like mm-hmm. how do you how do you create a name like Resand or Tamlin? Like these are not names I've ever seen before. Yeah, or heard before. Whatever. I like saw a funny TikTok once where it was like how to come up with like your fantasy person's name. Yeah, and it had I think it was like it almost made like a grid mm-hmm. where you put like you picked like three names you like. Yeah, and you do the three names on on the left side of this grid and the three names across. Yep. And if it was in the on the left side you picked like the first half. Mm-hmm. And if it was on the top you did like the lower half. So okay. like when the same words matched it was just that word. But like right. so like an example would be like if Alex 
was on the left and met Sarah, mm-hmm. it would be like Aura. Yeah. Or if it was the opposite, oh, it would be like Sax? Sa- six? <laughs> six? It was like something like that. And I was like, that's a very interesting way to come up with fantasy names. It but like, really is. But it was like, it, it kind of gave you like six or seven like options. And it was right. like, do any of these sound good or make sense? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was really creative and funny. That's a good way. Because yeah, I'm always like, how do you come up with like Prithian? Like just creating the world you know what I mean just yeah. even naming it is so hard to me because I've because yeah. I've thought like my husband's always like why don't you write your own book like you love to read I was like do you know how hard it is it's so hard even just thinking of a character's name yeah. I was like I don't even know how I would pick a character's name yeah it's just it's so hard and that's why it's like all the more incredible when someone does it mm-hmm. and does it so well yep it's like so impressive to me amazing. so I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts on the book of why you love it? Why, why it's important to read? Um, I think when you initially told me it was like a beauty and the beast spinoff, I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I guess that's cool. I'll read it. Cause I mean, yeah. I do love beauty and the beast, but I was like, eh, I don't really want to read like yeah. a beauty and the beast story. But then when I read it, I was like, if you hadn't said Beauty and the Beast, I would have never thought Beauty and the Beast. See, the Which, only like, reason why I would say Beauty and the Beast is because every, like, thing I was reading yeah. was, like, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's a Beauty right. and the Beast retelling. But, like, even... Once you get the tip, hints of it, but... Yeah. Because, like, when they... Even when, you know, we were introduced to them with the masks on, like, I didn't think Beauty and the Beast at all. It, like, never crossed oh, my really? mind. Which I'm probably, like, the only Again, person. Again, I'm obsessed with Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. So it came to my mind very quickly. But, like, I thought of, <laughs> like... I don't know. I, cause just because when I think Beauty and the Beast, I think, oh, he's a beast. And, like, I know we meet him initially in, like, wolf form. But then he transforms into a, a fae and he just has a mask on. So I didn't really... Yeah. I was like, I don't understand Beauty and the Beast. So I wasn't thinking Beauty and the Beast at all. But I That's like I, I get now, like, why yeah. people say that. Um, but I was like, what is she talking about? I was like, this isn't a Beauty and the Beast <laughs> spinoff. But I was like, it's an enjoyable book. I really like this. And then it got yeah. so good as it went on. No, when um, I when I tell people about this book, because part of me doesn't want someone to pick up this book, pick up on the Beauty and the Beast vibes, and yeah. just be like, "Oh, I know how this ends." Right. No, so I totally like, get it. Whenever I tell people like you have to read this book, I'm like, it's gonna start out a lot like Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. but about halfway through, it's gonna take a turn, and you, it's gonna like it just shoots off into the sky, amazing. Yeah. So that's how I, <laughs> I try to describe this book to people. Yep. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast meets Hunger Games meets... Mm, I feel like there's like a third one. There is, but here, like, but I don't even know what that third thing would be because yeah. I think like we mentioned at the beginning, neither of us have consumed a lot of like Faye-based no. books, movies, TV shows, anything. Mm-hmm. Like this was like the first like Faye-based book for you and I. Yeah. So it was like a new creature... Thing. for us to start yeah. experience that we hadn't before yeah so I don't know but now everything gets compared to this and nothing lives up to it so <laughs> it's a little depressing now reading like fantasy books I'm like oh well you know it's not Akatar, so it's not Akatar as good ugh unfortunately yeah um they I remember when I finished this book and I was like or this series and I was just reeling I kept seeing on TikTok this phrase mass destruction yeah but it was mass spelled like sarah J. Maas. m-a-a-s and how everyone was like this author ruins you <laughs> you're never she gonna be does. able to read anything else again <laughs> and i was like damn it I come know. on well we read okay so there's what there's eight throne of glass which i i love throne of glass and we're we're gonna do throne of glass later yeah that was, a, that was a good follow-up. That kind of helped ease me out of my depressive right. sleep. But I was going to say, we read The Eighth Throne of Glass. We did The Five Akatar, And then The One, the Crescent, one City. Crescent City. So, and we both did that in like two months. We did that in like a two to three month time span. <laughs> and so it was. we read all of Sarah J. Mouse's books in a two month time span. Because they're all amazing. They're all incredible. But then it was crash and burn after that. I literally really didn't was. know what to do with myself. Yeah afterwards yeah no like reading was just such a letdown after it really <laughs> which is so depressing it really is which is why we keep rereading these books it's part of why we decided to do this podcast because we wanted to reread the books and we're like well then we can keep talking about it and keep bringing it up and people won't get annoyed because it's you know for it's, <laughs> it's for, for our hobby it's, it's our hobby it's work so <laughs> this is a profession 
ish. ish. But any, <laughs> yeah. I just no. You're totally right. It's the the this book is so good, mm-hmm. just like in every way possible. Yeah. It's so hard for anything else to live up to it. Yeah. And I think we did so like high level reasons why it's so good. Mm-hmm. Insane world building. Right. Amazing characters. Mm-hmm. Amazing messages. Yep. Like, could you ask for more? No. No. And that was just the first book. I know. And the first one's not even... <laughs> it's not even the best. No. <laughs> oh, so I'm so excited to dig into the second book. No. Okay. No, without spoiling anything, because we kind of said this one was going to be mostly focused on just this first book. Yep. Wit, what book is your, like, favorite in the Akatar series? The second. Okay. The second is mine, for too. Sure. Okay, for so sure. Okay. So, readers, listeners, readers, you're both... Um, this next season, Sarah and I are about to lose our minds. Yep. Because we love it so much. So much. Anywho. All right. Well, I feel like we gushed enough. That was a good gushing roundup. Yep. (sighs) Feels really cathartic. I know. Thank you so much for listening to our Mm -hmm. entire first season. Uh, Great job on your part. Great. Yeah. You guys were great (laughs) listeners. Great support. We were great podcasters on our first season. Yeah. This was a real team effort by all involved. Yes. So thanks for listening. And we look forward to diving into book two with you guys in a few weeks. Yes. Join us for season two to go through A Court of Mist and Fury. Thank you so much for listening to A Court of Fairies and Fangirls, a Sarah J. Mass fan podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And let us know what you think. Jump in on the conversation. We look forward to chatting with you more next week. Bye-bye.